Um, and uh, we worship on Sundays because of the resurrection. We remember each week the resurrection power of Jesus is available, not just last week, but the resurrection power of Jesus is available this week. And the scripture says, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead hits you, dwells in you, that spirit will quicken you. Some of you need a quickening. And it's available. And so we pray you'll receive it. As we continue our series called Good News, last week we talked about the good news of Easter, and it's a lot. And this week we're going to talk about the good news about God, what God thinks about you. And I got carried away. I started studying this, and God thinks about you a lot. And my list got longer and longer and longer and longer, and then I had to like cut it back and say, Lord, what, what things do you want me to talk about? I, I got it down to seven, so pray I make it through them. Not a, a one amen in the whole house. Thank you for that amen. Appreciate that. This, this book is the revelation of God. It helps us to understand who God is so we don't make an idol. We don't make God up. He shows us, here's who I am. And then it shows us his plan for our lives. And so we're going to read from uh, the book of Ephesians today. And as we read from the book of Ephesians, we're going to look at the good news that God has about you. And this is one of many, pa I spent a long time reading many passages of scripture because God says a lot about you. God has plans for you, and his plans are good plans. As Jeremiah the prophet said, plans not to harm you, but plans to give you hope and to give you a future. Good plans, and we'll look at some of those plans today. But even as we read this passage of scripture uh, from the book of Ephesians, just look at God's thoughts towards you, his plans for you. As we read together, because we want to praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us, well, that's God's heart towards you, to bless you in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing. That's what he wants to give. He wants to give you every spiritual blessing. Are you ready to receive it? That's what he wants to do. For he chose us. Well, there's the good news. He chose us. He picked you. You know when you line up as a young person and they go down and they pick you, pick, 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 and someone will always be last? Well, when God picks, he picks all of you first. It's one big picking, one big choice. You're all first. He chose you in him before the creation of the world to be holy. That's important, to be blameless in the sight of his, in his love. He has predestined us to, for his adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will in him we have redemption through the blood that's the work of the cross and through the work of the cross we have forgiveness of sin that's good news in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he may lavish this is God's heart towards you God, God is not stingy God lavishes everything he does God does big God does nothing small He's in small things, but the small things are even part of big things. He lavishes his love on you. Just tell your neighbor, he lavishes his grace on you. He lavishes his love on you. And he does it with all wisdom and understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ. In him, we're also chosen. There's that word again having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will. Let's put our hand in our hearts as we just say, Lord, we want to hear your voice today, your word. Give us ears to hear what the Holy Spirit would say and hearts that say yes. In Jesus' name, and everybody says, amen. amen. Now, I don't know who you see when you look in the mirror. Who do you see when you look in the mirror? What do you see? What do you think when you look in the mirror about the person that's looking back at you? And what's the inner conversation? That's what we're talking about. What's 
the conversation that takes place. I don't know how many of you know uh, Lauren Daigle. Yes, Daigle. She has a song, very famous song. Do you know it? What is it? You said. And, and what happened was she received a prestigious award, and when she received the prestigious award, she was on a high. Do you ever get on a high? This is a high point, a mountaintop experience. And while she was on that mountaintop experience, she started thinking about, you know, not every day is like this. Some days are high, some days are low. You ever have a low day? She was just being honest. And as she thought about that, she thought, what makes the difference between the high days and the low days? And it's often inner conversation, your self-identity. Every person in this room has a self-identity. When you look at that person in the mirror, you think something. You all have an inner conversation. And that inner conversation is shaped both by what people have said to you, about you, and your own thoughts. But the combination of those things creates your self-identity, and your self-identity shapes every relationship you have. Know that. Including your relationship with God and your relationship with everyone on the earth. So we're talking today about the self-identity of the person that you see when you look in the mirror. When I look at the person in the mirror, I often talk to him. Amen. Sweet Darla Joy just said amen, because she hears me talking to that guy in the mirror. And here's the thing. There's people in this room that are believing things that the world has said to them, that... Your teachers said to you, your parents said to you, but what I'd like you to hear today from the heart of God, I'd like you to hear what God says about you. We're just going to look at some good news of what God says about that person in the mirror, when he thinks about you, when he directs himself to you. So Lauren Daigle went through this, and I don't know if you know her song, but here are the words, some of the words from her song, because she was coming to a place of identity and self-identity. This chart... Chart, chart breaking, chart breaking, chart making. She made the charts anyway. <laughs> Listen, the, the words are beautiful and poetic. And it was part of this journey that we're on today. Self-identity. What is it? And where does it come from? Here's what she wrote as she sings the song. I keep fighting voices. Ah, some of you know this. I keep fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie, you know where those lies come from? The father of lies. And he has nothing good to say to you. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. I'm, am I more than just the sum of every high? Here it is, and every low. That's what she thought after this award she got. Remind me once again just who I am because I need to know. And then... This just, oh, she's, it's in the song. I didn't know if I should put it as the lyrics, but I, it's like a cry from her soul. Oh, oh. She continues, you say, who's the you she's talking about? You know, she has a relationship with God. You say, she's saying, here's what, what the Lord would say. You say, I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say, I am strong when I think I am weak. And you say, I am held when I'm falling short. And when I don't belong, oh, there it is. You say I am yours. And I believe, oh, I believe. What you say of me, I believe. Amen. The only thing that matters now, oh, this is good. The only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. In you I find my worth, in you, Say these words, I find my identity. And then from her soul again, oh, 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 oh. You say I am loved when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I'm falling apart. And when I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe, oh, I believe. What you say of me, I believe. Oh, I believe, yes, I believe. What you say of me, everyone, together, I believe. 
What a beautiful reflection of someone that is coming to understand what really matters in life, the real truth of life, is not what anyone else in the world says about you, but what God says about you. And I'm going to tell you that it's good news. It's good news. So we're going to talk about good news, about God's thoughts towards you, and go through some of the many things that I found, and I just pray these are the ones I felt for you guys today. So I know there are people in this room that need this. Nudge your neighbor, say, that's you. No, I'm just kidding. You know? <laughs> but there's people in this room that say, and they hear it maybe from themselves or from someone else that just say, I'm unloved, I'm unlovable, I'm hard to love. And to that, God answers, you are forever loved. I often say it, and I believe it, in my heart of hearts. God loves you more than you think he does. And God's love for you doesn't change. He doesn't love you more when you're good and love you less when you're not. His love is consistent. I love when the Bible gives us these words. They're inspired. They're magnificent words. They're words that are worth memorizing. As the Apostle Paul says, for I'm sure of this, and I wish you were sure of this. This is a surety I'd like you to have when you feel like you're unloved or unlovable. He said, no, I'm sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor heights nor depths nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. You are loved. And why is that important? Because it brings security. When you're loved by someone, it attracts you towards them. If you feel unloved by someone, you tend to draw away from them. And it's important when we're in a setting like this. If you know the truth that God loves you more than you think he does, you will be drawn towards God today like a magnet. Nothing will be able to separate you from the love of God because you know that you're loved and that love draws you towards God. So when we sing a worship song, you press towards his presence. When the anointing of the Holy Spirit is in the room, you, you want to be under the spout where the glory comes out. That's old-timey right there. But that's where you want to be. Because when you say, I'm not lovable, God says, oh, no, no. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Second thing, when you feel like you're broken, God says, no, no, no. I want you to see yourself as whole and healed because the very nature of God is a healer. And he heals us in every way possible. He heals our emotions. When our emotions are broken, when we feel out of control emotionally, when we feel down in the depths emotionally, he says, no, I would like to heal those emotions and I'd like to bring them into stability and a place of blessing. He heals us physically. And we often pray here for physical healings. And when we began this year, in January, we had a specific direction from the Holy Spirit, we sensed, to pray against cancer. And just last weekend, I heard three amazing testimonies of healings of cancer. Um, Lori, uh, Lori, Lori came, Lori showed me a chart of her mother up in Minnesota. And it was at 75, I don't know, 75% or 75, it was up this high on the chart. And then the chart just went like, they just wanted to show me her health chart. This was not her health declining, this was the cancer. Down to zero. Now this is, why would I say it? Because when you look at that person in the mirror and maybe you're going through a struggle, you say, you look at that person and say, you're healed. Get that sense. There was Nancy Bass, and I talked with Nancy. And Nancy's stage four cancer. They had given up. And she gave me the testimony last week. Completely cancer free. Completely. 
So we have prayed that this place would be a place of healing, that the power, the gift of healing, the gift of the Holy Spirit would be alive and well in this room, that sick people that are in our community would know that if they come here, Jesus is going to heal them because Jesus is a healer. And some of you are facing diagnosis. Don't feel broken. See yourself as whole and healed. It's your destiny to be whole, to be healed. And then the greatest miracle of all, our spiritual healing. That he takes our spirits and he brings them back to life. That's the greatest miracle of all, the born-again experience. So many people opened their hearts to Jesus Christ last weekend. So beautiful, yes, so beautiful, yeah, so beautiful. So don't look at yourself as broken. Look at that person in the mirror and say, you, for, you're looking good. That's what I always say. <laughs> you old thing, you. <laughs> but I often pray. I often pray when I receive communion, which we've done in this service. As I receive the bread of the Lord, I say, every cell of my body is under divine order. Amen. Every cell of my body is under divine blessing. Don't see yourself as broken. See yourself as healed. The Bible says, quoting the Isaiah prophecy of Isaiah 53, Peter now repeating that, he says, he himself, speaking of Christ, bore our sins, that's good news, in his body on the cross so that we might die to sins, and that's important, and live for righteousness, and then I love this, and by his wounds or by his stripes, we have been healed. Do you see that's past tense? It's past tense in the original language, and past it, that means what Jesus did on the cross secured your healing. Body, soul, and spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So don't see yourself broken. For those who see themselves as weak, <laughs> he said, no, no, look at that person in the mirror and say, you are strong. That's good news from God. Do you know that there is spiritual strength? There's physical strength, and some of you in this room are physically stronger than others. Some of you keep yourself in good shape. I'm, I'm just going to stop right there. I had some other thoughts. I'm not going any farther. Just, you know, I'm going to compliment those who are keeping themselves in good shape. But there's physical strength. But beyond physical strength, there's spiritual strength. And you should know that when you feel wrung out, the psalmist said this. The psalmist says that the Lord will arm me with strength. That's good. Let's just say that together. God arms me with strength. That's a spiritual strength. That when you feel low, that there is a veil. I've experienced it. For seven years of my ministry, I hardly slept because of a calling that God had in my life. And I, I would feel so tired. And I would say, Lord, I'm trying to do your will to the best of my ability. Pour your strength into me. And he would rejuvenate me. So I just want to give that as a testimony, that there's spiritual strength that's available to you. You can receive it. Don't look at yourself at weak. Don't go around saying, oh, I'm weak. I love this prophecy in Joel that God's people were going to, to battle and they were going against a professional army with professional armaments and they were only farmers. And so they were taking their farming implements and they were pounding them into weapons. And here's what the prophet says. You're beating your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spurs. And they were looking at their equipment and saying, this isn't very good equipment. And they were saying, we are weak. He says, don't say that. Your strength is not in your plow or in your spear. Your strength is in the Lord. So you should say, I am strong. And they had that attitude, and they went out and won victory. And so will you. So will you. Don't look at your limitations. When you know that God Almighty is on the throne, he is called God Almighty for a reason because he is almighty and that strength is available to his children. Now let the weak say, mm, I'll try that again. Now let the weak say, oh, one more time. Now let the weak say, that's good news. When you say, I am alone, do you know this is an epidemic? 
Do you know? Do you know that the Surgeon General issued a paper a few months ago, 82 pages long, that declared loneliness epidemic in America, that almost half of Americans experience profound loneliness daily. So that means there are some beloved brothers and sisters in this room that experience that. And the Lord wants to say, when you feel that loneliness, I don't see you being alone. I see you in a family. The Bible says that God has decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gives him great pleasure that, that you, when you feel, and you could be in this room, you could be surrounded by hundreds of people, and the father of lies is saying, you're, you're alone, no one understands you, but the Spirit of God says, you are with your spiritual family. They have your back, we do. We are praying for your good. How many people are praying for the people around? You, do you want the people around you to know they are not alone? They're, they're part of a family. And they say, you're different. We love the different ones. God has a special love for different ones. I know because I are one. I just don't quite think like other people. Here's what Jesus said. Just before he was taken up from the Mount of Olives, he said to his followers, I've got all authority and I want to give it to you, to go into all the world with my authority. He says in Acts chapter 1, and I want to give you the power that goes along with that authority. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and the uttermost parts of the world. And then he said this, and I am with you always. That's what you need to hear. When you feel a loneliness coming on you, one of those people, you just need to know this. When you learn to have fellowship with Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit, you know this, I'm never alone because Christ is with me always. He promised it and he keeps his promises and that's the truth. He's with you always. That's good news. And I would say America needs to hear it. With so many people battling loneliness, it, a religion will not give this to you. A religion about Jesus will not give this to you. But a personal relationship with Jesus will give you the assurance, I am with you always. Let the church say amen. amen. <laughs> when you say, I'm a mess, he says, oh no, you are a masterpiece. I love Ephesians. When Ephesians says, you are God's workmanship, you are God's masterpiece that he has created. See, God doesn't see you as you are. He sees you as you're going to be. And God doesn't make junk. He made you and he doesn't make junk. And the enemy of your soul loves to come and talk about all your mess-ups. All your mess-ups. All the times you've messed up. And God doesn't even see your mess-ups because he's removed them from you as far as the east is from the west. He doesn't see those mess-ups. He sees the masterpiece. And that's what he'd like you to see. And that's good news. Amen. Just try it next time you look into the mirror and say, what a masterpiece. <laughs> oh, that'll make the devil mad. but it, It'll make somebody in your house laugh. What a masterpiece. When you hear it's hopeless or I'm hopeless, God says, I will fill you with hope. There's a blessing that I pray over you regularly. I'll pray it before we leave today, probably. From Romans chapter 15. May the God of hope. I love that he's the God of hope. May he fill you with joy, and I pray that always, and peace you trust in the Lord, so that you will overflow with hope. How do you overthrow? How do you, how do you overflow with hope? By the power of the Holy Spirit. I recently had someone say to me, it's hopeless, I can't go on. I said, come right here right now. 
Let me lay hands on you. I'm going to pray. I'm not going to try to talk you into hope. I'm going to invite the Holy Spirit to fill you. Because when the Holy Spirit fills you, you have hope. When the Spirit of God comes upon you, he brings you hope. Hope is a positive expectation of the future. Hopeful people are more joyful. Hopeful people have more peace because they just know everything is in God's hands. Why should I worry about it if everything is in God's hands? In fact, hope it just knows this deep in its soul. Everything is going to be okay. And he doesn't want to just fill you with hope. What does this say? He wants you to overflow with hope. That means some hope should be Fallen over on the person beside you. You got so much hope, it's fallen out on the people in your home. And they'll know you have hope because you smile more, you laugh a lot. You, it's just nicer to be around hopeful people. They're more joyful. They're more peaceful. But it's the power. Get this correlation. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. So when we ask for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to come upon us, when we open our hands towards heaven, which we'll do before we leave, and welcome the anointing of the Holy Spirit to come, the Holy Spirit is the one who brings hope, and he will turn a hopeless heart into a hopeful heart in a miraculous moment of changing our self-identity. That I'm not hopeless, I'm actually filled with hope. You got that? You got time for one more? Okay, one more. I had so many. And I've, if you notice, what I haven't talked. I've just let the scripture talk. I've gone through seven, let the scripture talk. Let the scripture, because this book is what he thinks about you. Amen. These, are, these are his thoughts. When you, when you feel I'm lost, you're not lost. God knows exactly where you are. Amen. And he's coming to get you. Yeah. We're going to be baptizing people in a few minutes. Because God didn't give up on any of them. He come and got them. Brought them into the family of God. John writes this, I'm writing these things to you that are God's children because your sins have been forgiven. He finds you. The prodigal son wasn't lost. He knew exactly where he was. And he was, always, he was drawing that prodigal to come back home. That's what he's doing in this room. He's trying to draw our hearts back into his home and he wants to forgive us a few verses before this in John it says if we confess our sins he's faithful he's just and he will forgive us of all of our sins and that's good news so you don't have to be lost any longer you don't have to be far away from God any longer you don't have to be good enough to receive it all you have to do know is that he came looking for you when you were lost Jesus said it like this here's my very mission in the world is to seek and to save lost people to bring them into the family to clean them up to let them know their love to let them know that there's hope to let them know that there's healing and that let them know this is what God thinks about you he thinks good things about you and that my friends is good news that my friends is the gospel that my friends is the gospel it's the gospel the gospel of Jesus Christ and it's good news the word gospel means good news let's open our hearts and receive that today so we close our eyes for a moment of prayer and we invite the Holy Spirit to draw every person to the greatest moment of miracle the moment of salvation the moment of born again, when the spirit comes back to life, the heart is joined with God, and hope is born because the author of hope has entered our lives. I'm going to lead in a simple prayer. Just don't pray the words from your mind, but pray from your heart. If you pray from your heart, a miracle will take place in your life today. And so, can you join us? i like everyone to pray. Would you say out loud, because God loves to hear your voice. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in Jesus' name because I really need you. I repent of my sins and I leave them behind. Today I make a brand new start. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Forgive me. Love me. Lead me. Guide me. Help me to follow Jesus. 
every day of my life. In Jesus' name. Our eyes are still closed. No one looking around, please. Because I don't want to embarrass anybody, but I want you to know you are precious to the Lord. You're precious to us. And I just want to be in prayer for you in the days to come. You prayed that prayer today, and you prayed it for the first time, or for the first time in a long time. Today is a new beginning, a fresh start for you. Let me know by just putting your hand up high enough for me to see it. And raise your eyes as well, because I don't want to miss you. Let me just see you guys. I want to see you. God bless you. I'm glad you're here right here. God bless you. That's the Holy Spirit on you guys. That's the Holy Spirit on you. I sensed that when I met you in the lobby. It's a special day for you. And I bless you. Who else? You put your hand up high enough for me to see right here. God bless you guys. So glad you're here. God bless you. Yes, I don't want to miss you. I'm just taking the right. Can I see your eyes? Bless you. I'm glad you're here. God's working in your whole family. I'm glad. We're glad for that. Anyone else right here? God bless you. Yeah, we haven't made eye contact. Just wave a little bit at me. I don't want to miss. Everyone is important. Right here, I see you. Right here, ma'am. God bless you. Glad you're here today. Let God do great things in your heart and in your life. Are we not right here? God bless you. God, right here. God bless you. Glad you're here today. Isn't that wonderful? Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? The Bible says bring your vessels, not a few. Right here, God bless you. Welcome. Welcome to the family of God. Welcome to the next step of your spiritual journey. Yes, that's the Holy Spirit. What's he doing? Drawing, saying you're not lost, you're not hopeless, you're not broken. I see you differently than you see yourself. Anyone else? I don't want to miss you. Right here, God bless you. Join in your wife. Thank you. Right here, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Wow. Wow, it's almost like Easter Sunday all over again. Hallelujah. Whoa. Oh, give the Lord a great praise. No, no, give him a great praise. Give him a great praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Now let's all stand. We want to help you. Now, if you haven't been baptized, those that are coming to the Lord, you can be baptized in the next few minutes. We're not doing, we're not going, we're going to baptize people. But I want to bless you. Before we, you, if you want to get baptized, just come over to the baptism people. Say, I need to get baptized. Let me bless you guys, though. Thanks so much for being here today. But keep bringing your friends to church. Keep making invitations so that new life can keep growing in this area. So the miracle of salvation can continue to happen. And I love you and God loves you even more than I do. And I love you a lot. Let's open our hands towards heaven. This is how I like to pray. And I invite you to open your hands towards the Heavenly Father, that He is the giver of blessings. And my hands are open to receive blessing with you. But I pray that the Lord will bless you. I pray that the Lord will keep you. I pray that the Lord will cause His face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the God of hope fill you with joy. May you smile more, may you laugh a lot. As you trust in the Lord, may you overflow with joy, peace, and hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I bless you in Jesus' name, and in Jesus' name, you are very blessed.